Hey folks, Alan Manick, the Hot Rod Hippie here. Today's video, we're taking a look at the Snap-on Thermal Imager. You too could have predator vision. Wait a minute, that's, I didn't sign up for this. Nope, nope. Okay, theatrics aside, we are looking at the Snap-on EETH 300 Thermal Imager. This is a really handy diagnostic tool for those auto techs, fabricators, home improvement folks who are looking to step up their game a little bit and maybe see things that they can't personally see with their own eyes. Humans can't see in the IR spectrum, this camera can. It's really handy for a lot of different diagnostic uses, but let's get into the specifications first. So when you pick up this tool, you get the tool in the box. There's a blow molded plastic tray, a really thin little tray in there that holds the tool itself. It also holds a micro USB cable and a micro USB wall charger, which is a five volt, two amp hour charger, similar to a lot of cell phone chargers. So now let's actually take a look at the tool. The tool itself has a nice comfortable rubber over mold grip. It's got easy to access buttons right here at the bottom below the screen at the top of the handle, which are easy to get to with your thumb and actuate simply. Moving up from the controls is a 3.5 inch screen that displays at a 320 by 240 resolution. However, the camera in this unit is an 80 by 60 resolution screen, 80 pixels by 60 pixels. So it is not nearly as fine as the screen would indicate. Looking at the other side of the camera, you have a battery door at the bottom that you can pop off to access the lithium ion rechargeable battery, though you don't need to remove it to charge, it charges in unit. It's got the trigger on here, which when you pull the trigger has a really nice tactile click to it. It really lets you know you pulled it and that takes an image. Heading up from the trigger is the actual camera itself. The actual lens that picks up the image for this unit. And you might note that it has no cover. There is no lens cap. There's no cover to go over that at any point. So you do need to be careful about that. Up at the top of the unit, you have a rubber flap that pulls aside to access a micro USB plug. So you can go ahead and plug your cable into there for charging or for connecting to a laptop or a computer to remove images from this unit. And you have a charge indicator in there. You also have a slot for a micro SD card. The unit, when I got it, came with an eight gigabyte Kingston micro USB card that they claim will hold 4,000 saved images. It's listed as rated at about a seven degree Celsius accuracy. So that is a fairly large accuracy window, but this thing is going from 840 degrees Fahrenheit at the top to negative four degrees Fahrenheit at the bottom. So you're looking at larger temperature things. You're not trying to nail down if that thing is 92 or 90 degrees with this. You're trying to figure out if it's 150 or 75. Now, Snap-on claims that this thing has a four hour battery life in continuous use at a 50% screen brightness. I was concerned that that was gonna be a problem, that it was gonna be really dim at 50%. So I set it to 50% screen brightness and I really didn't find that to be an issue at all. It's actually very legible. I had it a little brighter for some of the images you're gonna see in a minute, just so you could see better. But I found it fully visible at 50% brightness. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the menu system. This thing boots up pretty quickly and it's pretty easy to access the menu. You just hit the menu button and right away it brings up a list of different presets. That's one of Snap-on's big hanging points on this. The big thing they're hanging their hat on with this unit is the presets. Those are known good and known bad items. Things that they have checked out the thermal image of when they're functioning properly and when they're not functioning properly so that you have an idea of what you're looking at. If you got a misfiring cylinder, one of them's gonna be cold. If you got a coil pack, it's not firing right. It might be hotter than the other ones or it might be colder than the other ones. And that's really gonna stand out to you. You can cycle through a bunch of different presets. You have powertrain and exhaust, body and electrical, chassis and brakes, and HVAC. To cycle to the actual options of it, it took me a little bit to figure out how to do that. You had to cycle over to the right with the right arrow till you get to these little gears up in the corner of the unit and then I was able to get to the options menu. In the options menu, you have different color palettes, iron, rainbow, gray, and something called cool and hot, which has a kind of a brown sepia tone thing going on. Now, the next setting is something really important. That is emissivity. 
Emissivity is important, not only because it's a difficult word to say, but also because it's actually an extremely important function in one of these thermal imagers. If you have an IR thermometer, one of the pickup types that just displays the temperature of whatever you're pointing at, you may have realized or you may not have realized how inaccurate those are when looking at anything that isn't black. If you're looking at a shiny chrome header, if you're looking at a bright aluminum cylinder head, that thing is not going to read accurately because it's not ref it's reflecting it in weird ways. It's not reading the way it's meant to. And the Civity settings in this unit allow you to adjust for that. And the Civity settings have five different settings. Aluminum, so if you have an aluminum cylinder head, aluminum radiator, that'd be really great for that. Iron and steel, which would be your bare iron and steel, your bare block, your bare cylinder head, your brackets on your engine, your exhaust manifolds. Oxidized cast iron, because that oxidized cast iron is starting to get a, a darker hue to it, coming closer to black. Oxidized steel, again, coming closer to that color. And it's also good for fabricators if you're working with mill scale on a, on a piece while you're working with it, that's closer to a black. And then you have plastic rubber non-transparent. That's gonna be your, your rubber radiator hoses, your plastic engine covers, your relays, things like that. So we've discussed a little bit of the specifications. What we do really use this thing for? Basically anywhere you would use an IR thermometer, I would see using this instead. It's really gonna pick up temperatures better. It's gonna show you the differentiation as you go across things. Sometimes I'll use an IR thermometer and I'll go across a panel while I'm welding on it to see how that heat is affecting it. If I'm overheating areas of it, see if I should maybe let that piece sit before I go ahead and weld on it some more. This will give me the whole image right away. I don't have to go across the whole panel and get a poor reading with my IR thermometer. This thing's gonna read out a lot better, especially with the proper emissivity setting. And it's gonna show me a lot better what that panel looks like as a whole image because I'm literally seeing the whole image. Another place where this is really handy is home improvement folks. Insulation, plumbing, electrical, all kinds of uses you might have for it are really handy. That's one of the reasons I personally picked it up was to work around my apartment here in New England checking for air leaks and insulation problems. So let's go ahead and take a look at my actually using it in that function around my house. So now as you can see on the image, I've got a massive air leak at the bottom of that door. And of course the unit had to go through a calibration because it does that constantly when you're trying to use it. Anyway, the temperature reading at the bottom of this door, air coming underneath of it is 21 degrees Fahrenheit. That is clearly a serious problem and I need to seal this door off because I can't go ahead and tear apart the closet and insulate it. But that's showing me exactly where my issue is. Look around the door and I don't seem to have too much of a problem with the rest of the door though I am going to seal the whole thing. So this thing has been really useful to show me a few air leaks that I have, places where I'm sending heat out into the world, cooling off the apartment, it's not helping me at all. To the point I knew where those two doors in my living room were both cold and drafty, I knew those needed to be sealed. However, I didn't realize that almost all the windows in this apartment have air leaks. It seems like they weren't properly installed when they were put in. They must not have insulated properly, must not have sealed the outside properly. So I have air leaks around the actual frames of the windows, and that's something I definitely need to address. So this has been really handy in that regard. Let's head back to the studio and talk about it some more. So now you've seen the specifications of this thing. I've shown you it in operation. What do I really think of this thing? Well, at the end of the day, I'm exactly where I expected to be when I picked this tool up and was gonna present it to you. And that is, it works really well. It meets my expectations for this tool. Don't buy it. At, quite simply, that's where I'm at. There's a few things that really stand out to me as major issues here. Number one, the chief, the big boy, is it is not a 320 by 240 resolution camera. The marketing material would love for you to believe that. It is misleading in stating the only resolution numbers it puts out are 320 by 240. And that is a big thing to hang your hat on. The E8 from Fleur, 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 I don't really know how to say it. I'm gonna say Fleur, let me know in the comments down below if I'm wrong about that. The E8 from Fleur is a 320 by 240 camera. 
it picks up at a 320 by 240 resolution. This camera is an 80 by 60 camera. That is equivalent to Fleur's E4 model. The E4 is a $995 camera. This one is a $1,395 camera at MSRP. The Fleur model also has a dual camera design. It picks up a normal image like what you're seeing right now and an infrared image, and it layers the two together to create a more contrasty, easier to differentiate picture. And that is really nice. This unit does not have that. It has a single camera and that is it. I really find it really dirty of Snap-on that they don't really clearly state in the specifications that this is an 80 by 60 camera. Everybody else is honest and clear about that in all of their marketing materials, Matco, Mac, Milwaukee, they all make mention of what resolution their cameras are. This one doesn't. The next thing that I really don't like about it, my, probably my second biggest gripe, is that it doesn't come with a case. It comes in this cardboard box. That's it. It's got a really thin, cheap plastic tray inside of there and nothing else. So I don't get a blow mold a case. I don't get a soft carry bag like you might with a multimeter. For $1,395, flat out, that's ridiculous, snap on. The next thing goes right along with not having a carry case, and that is that there is no way to protect the lens. It does not have a lens cover. It does not have a shutter to go over the lens. The Fleur E8, like I mentioned before, has a shutter that goes across the lens to protect it, both of those lenses, to protect them so they're not worrying about damaging them from harsh elements that you're going to be in with this thing. Also, this unit only has a one-year warranty, as most Snap-on diagnostic tools do. Most of the other units on the market have at least two-year warranties, if not greater ones than that. Moving down the list a little bit, I think the menu system on this thing's fairly clunky. I didn't particularly care for it. I figured it out after a little bit, but a touchscreen would have been really helpful. It doesn't have a touchscreen, though. Another point to make about this tool is that it is definitely an advanced tool. So with that, I really don't find much of a need for that whole good and bad built-in demo mode thing. I don't, I don't need that. As a skilled auto technician, I know what things are supposed to look like and supposed to function like, even if I can't see IR with my own eyes. I know what a heat seeder circuit's gonna look like if I point this thing at it, and oh, I can see there's a dead spot in the middle of it. I can see there's a spot that sure looks like it's quite a bit hotter than the rest of it. I'm gonna be able to investigate that pretty thoroughly without having to have some generic known good and known bad built into this unit to tell me what I'm looking at. So really, at the end of the day with this tool, it's a good tool, it works well. I feel like I'm ripping it apart a little bit because I really feel like that marketing material is just really misleading and I'm trying to avoid anybody else having that same problem. I don't wanna see you pick this thing up thinking that it's a $3,000 E8 equivalent when it's just not. It's equivalent to the E4 from Fleur, which is a $995 tool, but this is a $1,395 tool. Now that said, I have seen this on sale quite a bit for around the same price as the Fleur E4. Seems like almost since it came out, it's been on constant sale. So you might be able to pick it up for a better price than the Fleur E4. However, the Fleur models do come with some things that are nicer. Pretty sure the E4 comes with a case. It comes with a software suite you can use in your computer, which allows you to pull those images off and pull out the information, the metadata of the actual pictures, so you know what the settings were when you took it, so you can know, you know what, that emissivity setting probably wasn't right. That's probably not a particularly accurate image. And that's a really nice, maybe overkill system for most folks, but at least it comes with it, this tool doesn't. So, at the end of the day, if I had to recommend, if you're really looking for a unit like this with a nice large display, I would pick up the Fleur E4. Or you might want to look at some of the other options that Fleur has. They have like the cell phone unit that goes onto your cell phone. It's an 80 by 60 unit with that two camera system. And that's going to display at a nice large resolution. So you can really see some images there. And it's only like $200 for that setup. Go ahead and drop this video a like if you found it informative. Let me know in the comments down below what you think of this thing. Do you have a different model IR camera that you like better? Or do you just think it's ridiculous that Snap-on's trying to be misleading about this? or especially that it doesn't come with a freaking case. That drives me nuts. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel for more content like this in the near future. Thanks for coming around, folks.